Hello everybody, my name is Bubbles Nest and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. In today's video, we are going to be redoing an old guide we did a very long time ago at this point, which we did in March. I know, not too long, but because I didn't only start this channel in February, that is a long time. So today's guide will be on the achievement 1, King, 2, Crowns. Now this has slightly changed since the last time we did it. The main difference is we don't actually have to own any of France's estates, we just have to hold them. So that does make it a little easier, so... I guess it could be a bit more fun, but then again, with all the changes that NSP has brought in, this might be a lot harder to do. I've not done an SCW run since NSP came out, so this is going to be a bit of an experience for me as well. Let's begin, shall we? Some things, though, haven't changed, like, for example, put the army in the north and exercised it. May as well just give Franco for now, the logistics wizard. <laughs> oh, that's new, Enrique. That's interesting. Any other new generals? No, and... Well, Damiano Giras is still here, even though he was part of the International Brigades. Doesn't look like he's loyal to anyone. That's interesting. But anyway, doesn't matter for the generals for now. Research is still standard. Electronics and industry. But we will grab radio when we can. What doctrine do we start with? None. Oh, that's great. But anyway, more mills in the north. Something like this will do for now. For the mills we have, though, and dockyards, we're just going to dump all these ships. And just build convoys. For now, all into guns, we're definitely going to shift this around, but for now, this will do. Anyway, for focus, unsurprisingly, Great Spain, all the way down to secure the Northern Garrisons. Always creating an intelligence agency is useful. Don't hire a spy as it's not loyal to you. But for now, it's time to go and gather up our Air Force and Navy. For the Navy, it just needs to be in Spanish Africa for now. The Air Force can be put in Western Aragon and exercise. Shift K to do that as well. And now, tactically, we're now going to go up to speed 5 and actually <laughs> begin. There you go, the Spanish selection in 1936 has happened. Only from the ashes can we reforge the Republic now. Now, for us, it will be mostly just suppression of the strikes. There's no reason to do things like so easy loyalty of Prima de Rivera speeches, because that can give bonuses to the Republicans. So, there we go. Now, for us, it's still going to be the standard. We're going to go for Valencia first to distract the AI, but we're going to aim for Eastern Aragon and Catalonia. So there we go. Don't worry about political power, that's what a, the CDA campaign chest is for. If somehow the Republicans have failed in such a left, sure, it's way needed leader of loyalty, could be okay. So, now that we have 40 command power, we're going to promote ourselves a general to field marshal, this Jose Enrique, who is a Carlist loyalist. He says nationalist for now, but he is a Carlist, so we're going to promote him. Simply because the starting Carlos Field Marshal, Manuel Falconde, is rubbish. And since he's an organiser, we can get things like Logistics Wizard and Offensive Doctrine. Now, we could do one more decision, but we're going to wait a few extra days so that this decision that the Republicans are doing is done. That will give us just a tiny, tiny bit more time. I don't see any need to do another suppressor strike, so we'll try and sway a leader. Who do we get? Jose Maya Medant. Hmm... This guy down here, who I believe was part of the coup that actually overthrew the Republicans in the end. And see, stuff like that is why I ultimately chose to do that. The Republicans are using political power, one, they don't have, and two, shouldn't be able to use. But anyway, we have one more decision to make, and that's the decisions about General Franco. We can do Simpaquito or Compaquito. In my opinion, Sin is better as it gives political power. Now look, we just have enough time as long as the Republicans do no more decisions. Well, that done, we now just need to wait until July 19th at 3 o'clock to begin. We managed to out-meme the AI for once. That feels nice. And there you go. And under the leadership of Godfather and King, we will win this. Right, at this stage, it's time for some early encirclement. So we'll go for some divisions like that. Similarly, in the north, we're going to grab something like these divisions plus the entire army of Africa. 17 divisions like so, gather them up, give them that, and a front line like so, activate them on aggressive so they attack. We can probably go for Oviedo and Bilbao now. There you go Manuel, there's your job. So pin units like this, have this unit in Acolonia walk in, some units walk into Bilbao, have some pin the unit there. For the rest of the divisions though, gather them up and put them under your other field marshal. There you go. Uh, as I said, Jose is our field marshal now, logistics wizard, and Carlist. <laughs> Offensive doctrine, please. There you go, front line, all the way to the south. Won't activate that for a while, but having the bonus is nice. Let's give Gonzalo the bigger army, and Jose the smaller. 
So you have to get also your air force, assign that to whichever you like. Pull your spy, finally we can send them in. There we go. And that's pretty much it for our prep. But for now we're going to have to be very good. If we are sensible we might be able to encircle Valencia, who knows. But for focus it's time for the Carlos insurrection. Take the speed down if you want, this is going to be slow and steady. But also do not spend your political power right now. You will need political power. Front lines are solidified. For now we're going to do... Estora so it can be broken sooner rather than later. It's more important anyway. Look, we're right there on this encirclement, but because of pinning, we only just got it. But that's good. I believe the Soviet volunteers spawn here, so if we've done this right, we've trapped them. As you can see here, the Republicans have been a bit more sensible with their decisions now. I believe they're in a lot more sensible state, so they'll do things that won't affect you. They'll do states like Burgos. Which is annoying, but it actually makes sense, let's be completely honest. But we did a store us first, so we could have the bow as well break, so we could send those units down as quickly as possible. And look, there you go, seven Soviet volunteers trapped. And I, did we just eliminate them? No, no, where'd they go? Where'd they go? Or did we, did we actually get them? Don't know, I'd like to think I did though. Now we've done prepare the cast insurrection, we're going to do the International and reunite the Roquetes. Hmm. But for now we're going to establish cells in Aragon, both sides of it, and Catalonia. Make sure you're on top of this, you just, just have enough time. It looks like we did eliminate those volunteers, I'm not seeing them anywhere else, so I'd like to say we did do them. And if we clean up Valencia, that'd be even better. Now yes, we could do the war in the north to do... Bilbao and all that, but it looks like it's breaking anyway. But getting rid of the Stonja Karajuntas, priceless. The anarchists rose up. Now I just remind you from the old guide, the method is simple, we need to kill the Republicans but keep the anarchists alive for distraction purposes against the Nationalists' AI. So we're going to send the Army of Africa to neighbour invade Kadids, and then we'll see where we end up. And there they go. Probably the quickest defeat I've ever seen for them. Now hold back and withdraw to your states that you're controlled. Something, no, not like that. It's something more like this. Hopefully the volunteers don't defeat them. They can, but I hope that they don't. And no compromise, Carlos Ideal. Start improving relations with Germany, Italy, and the Soviet Union. And Japan for Lendly Scams. I've done many a video on that. It'll probably be in the description. It's a tie between Leon and Salamanca, personally. So I guess we'll go for Salamanca today. The Crackdown. Nashus Spain versus Carlos Spain. Now for now we're going to do we've either split up the Carlos Wars. Not going to make that mistake like last time. We're going to do that so we can do Crusade against Democracy as soon as we can. But anyway, like I said, we're going to rush down VPs, get as far as we can. We need to get to places like Acronia, Bilbao and so on. Which is ironic considering that Bil Bilbao, I mean, is one of the ones that should be loyal to us from the start. But whatever. Anyway, we can now start our lend scams, do it with the biggest division you can, like the Army of Africa. So, go to Germany and beg them for guns. Oh, I think we're going to have to wait a day. Point is, though, put them on the lowest priority like that, and just get whatever you can from whomever you can. Grab something like Palma de Mallorca, as that is actually a VP. 
can also do something like Soweto if you want. Try and link up your divisions that are stuck. They will be. Do not accept Germany's volunteer if by some mad, mad moment they actually want to help you. And there goes the phalanges. That wasn't as quick as the first time, but that still worked out very well for us. <laughs> for now it's just build up guns, expand crusade against democracy for another year. This is going to be fun. But for now, alternate between crusade against democracy and other focuses. Do the ones that give you manpower first, as for now you have calls on all of Spain. You'll lose those calls once this ends, but... You may as well take as much advantage of it right now as you can. What about the Soviets? Yeah, I think we destroyed a lot of things from the Soviets, but hey, they actually have artillery and uh, support equipment to give us now. I guess that's a no-step-back feature. Japan has nothing. So for the Soviets, we get... Ah, uh, not bad. So for now, our production should look something like this. Mostly on artillery, but we'll put a few more into support equipment, fighters, and then into artillery. There we go. If you want to research fighter one, snow wouldn't be at the worst time to do so. Once you reach 150 political power, the first advisor you should take, in my opinion, is marketing here, the Carlos Intellectual, political power gain, but most importantly, data compliance gain. Once we lose our cause after this, he'll be very powerful, but he'll also be very powerful when we're fighting again, because honestly, that can eliminate garrisons. It is ridiculously overpowered. And for now, I'm going to go to research trucks. I'm not too sure that transport planes are the answer. They, they might be, though, the, the old motorized. Sorry, Anarchist, I had to use you as my, um, shall I say, breeding ground for guns. Something like that. And there they go. That took long enough. Let's continue our focus tree. Settle the succession question, please. Uh, let's see what we got in the end. Let's deploy all of those in training. Get rid of the rest. That's quite a lot. How many men do we have in the field? One million. That's the power of just using the maximum amount of recruitable population you can get during all of this. See, look, these are now all the cores we have now, but we have a million men and 200,000 in reserve. I'd say that worked out. <laughs> That's already 120 divisions. That's usually more than what I use anyway. We can actually demobilize a few. Now that we've got maintenance companies, let's make our ideal template. Dupe the Army of Africa. There we go. Replace one artillery of infantry. Replace the cavalry with support. And we're going to have to just keep it like that for now, as we don't actually have the XP to change over to maintenance companies. So we're going to have to fix that, but that's okay. Anyway, time for the succession question. Now, just like I said in the very first One Kings Two Crowns video, it actually doesn't matter. Both of these kings are Bourbon. They are both part of the House of Bourbon, so it doesn't matter. The only difference is Havia gives more stability, and dynastic continuity gives minus five consumer goods, but Alfonso will die in 1941. But since we did Alfonso last time, let's do the sacred king himself, Havia. Anyway, let's do Dios Pacho Rey instead of battle rights, because I want more output. Now that we have 100 critical power, let's start filling out our army. We're going to go for the Org guy first. I like Org. <laughs> Always very powerful. Then we'll go for things like logistics, regrouping, and that'd be nice. We'll go for Moller, but he's disappeared. Yeah, now we're just going to change everyone over to this Army of Africa template and exercise them. We're going to have to do it at some point. May as well do it a little earlier so it can be exercised. Make everyone at least level 2. No need for any level 1s around here. I would recommend having an army like Manuel's or whoever you want to be your primary invader units go all the way as the more you have, the stronger they'll be. And let's restore the empire for more mills. Because artillery is our biggest problem right now. One that we can solve, but still. 
And finally, we can slap on maintenance companies. That's usually what I do for this. You know what, we'll take a chance. We'll have some units that use this new old template. Nah, not that icon. And we'll have some that use the engineers instead. So, for instance, the first army will be using all of them. But maybe this one won't. You get what I'm saying, don't you? And battle rights now. Of course, is useful, but we'll get it whenever we can. It's not a priority. Time to plan our defense. So, half of some of this army will defend this little bit around Gibraltar. No need to lose any states here. We can afford to lose Malaga, can we? Mm, no. So, we'll defend Malaga too. That means the UK can't do anything about it. Well, the other half will be here. Once France prepares, we'll put some of them on their border so they can't just walk in. And these guys will be in somewhat around Africa, but also somewhat in our islands. So two of them will be on the Balearic Islands, and two of them will be in the Canary Islands. Just means that we don't lose those cores very powerful right now. Should we defend Ifni? Nah, but we can actually defend Equatorial Guinea, so we'll send a few divisions down there. At the very least, it will distract the area a tiny bit more, I'm sure. And when the time is right, we'll send the rest of them all the way to Ithany, which is now. I mean, not Ithany, Spanish Africa. I've changed the, the second army to needing trucks for their supply. Might just see how that can work out. Anyway, there's Danzigal War. Just like all other times, we're going to wait for Poland to fall and then we'll get involved. This is literally the first time I've actually seen a historical start to WW2 so far in NSB. Not been very involved so far. And there goes poor Poland. Germany hasn't even gotten the war goals for around Maginot yet. Oof. This looks like a strong Germany. Oh, I know what's happening there. These units are attritioning because I've lost cores connected to it. So look here. Astorias and Paspascal are no longer cores, so we're going to have to move them out. In the meanwhile, though, we'll send these 12 onto the French border. There goes Germany. So, another tradition brought back. We're going to justify France for French Guiana, as that will always remain as far as I know. There we go. And we're going to do our naval invasions. Now, yeah, the AI is a lot better at defending against them, so might have to change this on the fly if it gets worse. So for now, though, we're still going to do the classic of Bristol and Cardiff. That's still a lot of ports, and hopefully the AI is still distracted. UK does have a few more victory points, but the principle's the same. We're going to encircle London for a war score, and hopefully join the Germans. And there it is, fall of Paris. Now is our time to shine. Let's activate, let's put our navy on strike force in the Bay of Biscay and the western approaches. There they go, they've activated. Three France is where they are. Weirdly enough, no sign of the ghoul yet. Maybe he hasn't made his mark, but declared. And we're off. And the UK's been called in and we've lost our supremacy, unsurprisingly. We'll just have to wait until we get a little lucky. That was always the case. Let's go have some military access from Germany and Italy. There we go. <laughs> months, months late, but we finally got it. This is... <laughs> We don't even know if this is even going to work. That's the situation we're in. I mean, it was always a problem expecting the AI to be stupid, but... In a very typical scene, we're having to force our way in. So, Bristol, Cardiff, break that tile. Looks like this poor unit though is going to die, as Bristol has a lot of units on it. What a shame. What a shame. Have those units as backup, ready and waiting. Well then, question is, can we still do it? Only one way to find out. Fight! <laughs> still got to do the standard port taking. If we can gain some more, we could be okay. I have not a clue, though.
And there you go. The first time in NSB we have done it. London is in circles. Oh, by the way, you units are not going anywhere. Don't get your hopes up. Assuming the UK still puts out units, we'll be fine. As we can destroy them and gain them for war score. I mean, we already have 20%. That's a good start. It really just depends on how much of the UK's divisions and equipment we destroyed on the way in. Which I don't honestly have a clue. Meanwhile, we're trying to encircle Plymouth so we can get more stuff. Finally, the UK has put out a unit. As long as that keeps up, we're good. Oh yes, we do actually have a lot of spare units, so... Put some of them on the Vichy border that you share with France. <laughs> for some reason, there's an Italian division here that I have no control over. That's very rare for the AI to do. They never do that. Anyway, Vichy's just case is ready. Let's do it. Luckily, we're in the access, so it means nothing. So we're in a very ironic position here. Nice. And down goes Vichy. Hi everyone, Bubbles here. Just wanted to do a brief bit of post-recording bit where I point out some things I forgot to mention, like how, for one, if Italy takes anything in the Vichy France event, they own that tile by default. So if they own Savoy or Corsica, that's over. They own that tile and you'll have to fight the Axis, which is annoying. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. You could just reload or save scum or what over it. It could potentially help you. Second thing was, my plan at this point was to ask Italy and Germany for control of all French core states. This didn't work because the UK wasn't pumping out units enough for me to get war score to do it. I got pretty close, but I wasn't close enough. I don't know if the UK doesn't pump out units anymore, but yeah, who knows. Point is, I couldn't do it, but I still got enough war score in some regards, as you'll see. We're just going to lose more, so let's see if we can actually take it all in the peace deal. Because this is clearly not working. And there you go. Peace deal. The only thing we are going to do, apart from France, is to puppet Portugal. That's useful for us. But uh, try and cut Germany out like that. Take, Make sure you take Corsica. Well, when we can. But, to put it simply, the AI is not very inclined to take things. They're more inclined to puppet things when they don't have direct access to them. This is going to be a very complicated piece too, because we all had very similar percentages, so we're all just going to be passing a lot. See what I mean? I'm losing the UK to do this. But there you go, there's all of France's cores, and we'll puppet whatever is left out of the UK. Oh, <laughs> nearly forgot Constantine. And this is going to be a lot of border gore, but this will conclude the peace deal. They won't take anything else. There you go, Treaty of Belfast. And that will be one king, two crowns, as we own every single French core, including the ones in Algeria. You know what, let's do something else a little bit quickly. Let's do the Iberian Union, because I think I'll get it. I mean, while this peace deal is very messy, we did actually get most of what we wanted. We got Gibraltar. We got Portugal, we got a very small British Empire under Horatio himself. We got the province of Canada. I mean, it could have been better, but it also could have been a lot worse. Oh, oh, I haven't seen this. Look, this has changed since from the last time we mentioned him. El Page is now actually the non aligned leader of Australia. Ah, cool. It's meant to be Rod Hull, but no, nope, now El Page is here now. <laughs> Never seen him in game. Sorry, it's so surreal. Maybe they saw, maybe Paradox saw my video then. <laughs> there you go, we saw the Iberian Union. And what do you know? Portugal says yes, more cores, yay. <laughs> and by extension, a slightly bigger fleet. Yeah, like I said many a few times, puppet Portugal and they will never decline it because they can't. But yep, this is probably going to be the place where we call it today. We, as the we did one in two crowns and no step back. I think this went pretty well. Could have been better if the UK pumped up more units, but I mean, ultimately we got it. Could be better in, in invading them, but I still think it sort of worked in the end. Maybe I could have invaded a bit more, but with all the bonuses that Carlos get, especially with Crusade Against Democracy, I think that's what made the difference for us. I don't know if the old way of Bristol and Cardiff will still work for other nations, but, but this is a good sign for the future. 
Also, this is the first guide remake we've done. We'll probably do a few of them, especially on the more popular ones or the ones that are just bad. I didn't think the old One King to Two Crowns video was bad. In fact, it's one of the few early ones I kind of like. But mm, let's be honest, it's out of date now, so that's why we remade it. So until next time, everybody, this has been me, Bubbles Zest. <laughs> and leave any just comment below for future videos if you have any. Always looking for new video ideas. But until whenever we meet again, goodbye. Oh, by the way, I did want to bring up that you can still leave the conference in this way. As you see in this run, I actually do. I did lose a bit more men than the other run, but that was because I was being a bit, um, shall I say, stupid in Greece, and especially down in the attrition bloodbath that is <laughs> Africa. But hey, at least I got another organiser. You've got to think of the positives. But anyway, that other run, which is imperfect, is deliberate. You can, it's meant to show that you can still have an imperfect run, but still have the results that you want. But you can still perfect it, as you see here, 39%. I've also learned that the UK does still spell out units, just not to the same extent. They'll do it a bit, but not much. You'll see a lot more tanks and maybe a few divisions, but they won't just pump them out again and again and again and again and again. So you can still lead the conference with this, but it's imperfect now. Anyway, let's see if I can do better in this piece deal. Oh, um, what do you know I did? Casino Raj. A UK that got <laughs> most of its colony, so by de facto they're mine. A cleaner Africa, not a better Britain itself, but slightly bigger. So you know what? I'm pretty confident that this is viable now. Don't know what happened here though. Don't know how Greece ended up in control of Macedonia and has its capital in Skopje. That is pretty cursed.